Hey, um, so this is not an actual podcast, but we're just going to do a review of The Last Jedi novelization. Oh, no. No, we're not going to do The Last Jedi novelization. We're going to do Corpse Paint, the, a novel of Lord Leviathan by David Peake, released by Ward, Word, Ward Horde. Word Word Horde, Horde, Horde Books um, out of Northern California, Pentaluma. Um, Pentaluma. Our boy Ross Lockhart. Um, we are big fans of Word Horde in general. Pretty much. So we were excited to get a arc copy of Corpse Paint. Um, at you got a copy of this book at uh, the Outer Dark Symposium up in Santo. So shit, I forgot where it was. Where was it? Where's the Winchester House? Is that San Jose? Yeah, somewhere up there. You were hanging out with a bunch of serious Lovecraft nerds in uh, um, Central California. And I was hanging out with some cool people uh, who yeah. are all friends of ours, pretty yes. much. So, And you got a copy of this book. Um, and yes. So, so I appreciate it because we both read it. You read it first, mm -hmm. and then um, I just recently finished it. And for those of you who don't know, Corpse Paint is a novel about black metal. It's about a... Um, well, it's been a long time, 25 years, since uh, Angela, Angelus Mortis, uh, the black metal band, released its first album, Heinous, and it became a classic of the genre. Um, now, this is a pretty... Well, and then he put out two more albums called... It's like one guy, and this happens all the time in black metal. There's a lot of black metal projects that are one right. guy... And a bunch of other dudes who just like come in and play in the studio. So or they just go on tour. Yeah, yeah so, they show up for the tour. Yeah, they just he's hired. They hire people for the tour. So this was a very realistic aspect. Too. Oh yeah, no, I I think that what I loved about this book was it it it's written like David Peak knows black metal and death metal. Like this felt yeah really real. It's clear that um and we we both enjoy black metal. Mhm. Mm uh, a black metal t-shirt right now. Um I am not. For, I'm wearing a Rorschach t-shirt. But um from Watchmen? No, Rorschach the hardcore band. Oh. I'm wearing uh, a Wolves in the Throne Room t-shirt. Yeah. So um you get black metal points. So um this guy Max, he started this He's from Chicago, and he's known in the black metal world as Strigoi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he has this classic uh, black metal band, and he has three albums, or the first three albums, Heinous, Fields of Punishment, and Telos, are the, like, real raw shit uh, black metal so I kind of liken this as like he's like Chicago's answer to Burzum. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. But I think he's also in, in less Nazi, maybe. Yeah, yeah, less Nazi. <laughs> but I think he's somewhat modeled off of Noctis Diem's Blake Judd. Ooh, but, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Um, For those of you who don't know, Noctis Diem is a Midwestern Chicago uh, like death slash black metal band who put out a killer album called Assassins Black Metal Part One. Yeah. Part Two was not so good. Really great shit. Uh, um, shout out to my homie Bob Fouts who played drums for Noctis Diem on tour. That's rad. Um, yeah, uh, not that Bob's listening to this, but he should be. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. You know, maybe maybe that is who they're based off. Since uh, David Peak appears to be, is he in? Yeah, he still lives in Chicago. Yeah, so Knock Mistium would be like a good good guess of. Well, and Judd was was also a known at the. Uh, I think it is lowest a heroin addict, and I know he did rip off a bunch of fans at some point. But anyway, this is not the Knock Mistium podcast, so let's talk about corpse paint. Knockheads. Yeah, yeah, Mistiumites. Um, Mist. Yeah. So it's not the Knock Mistium uh, podcast. It is. Uh, we're just talking about this book. So the book Corpse Paint. Um, here's the thing: like it does get all the the black metal stuff right. Um, but it's actually really well written. Um, yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's lean where it needs to be. And then it's beautifully like full of awesome prose when it needs to be. Peak is yeah, a good writer super and super floored. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I guess one of the things you would expect from, and I worried about this when I put out my punk rock novels, the people would, which think, one, uh, well, any of them, like, uh, also in Chicago, boot boys is the wolf, right? 
But uh, when I did that, I, I didn't want people to think that I didn't like care about actually writing a a good book um, and, or having good writing because you can care you could you could sell a black metal book without having any actual like good writing or talent because there are people who just buy it because it's black metal. Yeah, because yeah. it's brutal and grim, dark as fuck. However, uh, this book um, has really poetic uh, poetic pose that prose at times and um the storytelling is really good uh the characters max and his hired drummer roland are both really good characters and so what happens is max wants to regain the power of his uh first three albums and believe me i've known enough musicians to know that you know it's kind of like stephen king like people always say the stand is their favorite stephen king book Mm -hmm. and um you know, I'm sure he's thinking like, shit, I wrote that in the 70s. Yeah. And so what's going on with Max is that everyone loves his first three albums and every conversation where people buying beers or whatever, they say, oh, especially those first three albums, he's heard it a hundred times. And so he, in order to try and get the power back of the Angelicus Mortis uh, Stragoi sound, he decides to go to the Ukraine to record the album at this um, like cult b- black metal cult called the Wisdom of Salinas or Salinas. I think Wisdom of Salinas is Salinas. the band that operates out of the weird cultish compound, right? And so uh, Ukraine was a weird choice, not Norway, but what? aptly fitting for how bleak this book really is. Yeah. Um. And so they go to the he. So they are going to record this album there. And what um, he wants, like this anti-human, anti-life, like kind of vibe to his album. And so in order to kind of get that feeling, he kind of goes back to the land. Uh, But that doesn't work out quite so well because he's totally fucked up on heroin. (laughs) And so but there's some like funny moments where he plays with uh, like what was the name of the band? Corpse something. Um there's another uh, corpse band in there. I, I'm not finding it, but anyways, so they play with some like goofy band, and and then um, that's when shit gets real. There's some inner inner. Well, I don't want to give totally give away the ending. This is yeah, what I'm doing spoilers, well, but rather than kind of going through the whole book, let's just kind of. What I really enjoyed about this book is that it has all like the trappings that are kind of synonymous with black metal and, and death metal crowds been at any point in time i think in in lesser hands the some of the scenes would have been really goofy but every scene really worked for me even yeah. down to the guys wearing the animal masks riding yeah. horses it is super black metal yeah and i, I every, everything like everything felt real and honest and i never once was like come on that's goofy and it, even down to kind of the 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 I forget his name. The house, the, the house mystic, uh, right. who kind of does the tarot card readings. Right. It all felt good. Well, right. And um, speaking as somebody who wrote a very similar story to this, but did it goofy <laughs> in uh, Amazing Punk Stories. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have a story called "The Darkest Night of Evil Souls." And it was, well, it wasn't exactly, it was just, you know, it was just a goofy story where a guy goes on tour with a death metal band and they, like, bring Satan to life or whatever. And I did it totally to be goofy. And, like, so, um, but at the same time, like, I I really appreciated that, that he played it serious and, and you know, gave a... Um, a really great uh, black metal novel. So I think yeah. black metal fans... I think black metal fans, but even if you're not super into black or death metal, you will still enjoy this book. It's not, it, it just, it's knowledge is rich and the history is there, but it's not going to alienate anyone who isn't into it. Yeah, it shouldn't alienate people, but, but let's be honest. If you, if when there's mentions of the, like Dark Throne albums, if you know the album, it's going to be better for it. Sure. And, be and, and experience. admittedly, I knew the albums mentioned in it because yeah. those are albums from my teenage years, but, you, I mean, God, we live in YouTube is available. They could just type it in and listen to it, or go on something like Spotify or Google and learn a little bit about it. So, mm-hmm. but it, 
But yeah, I got a lot of metalhead friends, and I suggest that they read Corpse Paint. They give yeah. it a shot. Um, uh, I give it um, three metal gauntlets. Out of, eh, maybe four. I give it four out of five uh, <laughs> metal gauntlets. Um, I and, would I would almost do a, a five if it weren't for the fact that I felt as if the more interesting characters aren't given enough breathing room but but i'd say a solid four for who me. did you find more interesting because i i actually did like max i like, the uh you didn't like roland okay. roland was interesting yeah I, I just felt like the the members of wisdom of selenus were far and away more interesting to me than max or roland but mm. that's a topic for another podcast for another um discussion well yeah i i i'm in favor of this book i think people should go get it um uh, trade paperback fifteen ninety nine from Word Hoard, and it's out now. You can go get it. Get on it. Yeah, corpse paint. Yeah. Metal.